delighted to um, start our presentation with this quote. Well, we feel that this quote perfectly summarises a social enterprise, which is what we decided to develop as part of our final project. Now, the decision to um, develop a concept for a social enterprise was actually really easy for us to make. Um, we, as INSD students in the future, we hope that our actions and our future jobs will be able to make an impact on society, a positive impact. But at the same time, we realise that in order for social projects to succeed and be sustainable, they need to have a very, very solid financial background. Now the next uh, decision that we had to make was to decide on the concept for our social enterprise. So who should be our target group? Um, this was also something that we actually, it was actually easy to decide between us. Um, us, like the rest of you, we're all in the process of looking for a job at the moment. And we're all becoming more, of aware, more aware of the difficulties in the job market. So we decided that our social enterprise should uh, target young people who are currently unemployed. So, um, to begin with, we decided to look um, what problems were young people facing across the world. So we decided to look for some um, interesting employ employment stats regarding youth, youth, youth unemployment. Um, as you can see here, we've um, been able to present some of the most interesting statistics. Um, one statistic that we find most interesting is here. Um, according to uh, one of the most recent UN Global Youth Reports, um, they reported that across the world there are 79 million young people, that's people aged between 15 and 24, who are unemployed. Now looking at this on a global level, this actually doesn't really appear to be that much. However, um, unofficially it's also reported that if you take into factors such as underemployment, that's when um, you're working but you, your job doesn't actually um, satisfy your basic needs, this figure could be as high as 900 million. So it's very clear to us that unemployment um, within the youth population is a very, very big problem. Now taking this into account, um, we decided that our social enterprise should not only be based uh, to tackle one problem locally, it should be uh, replicable in any country across the world, regardless of whether it's a developed or a so-called developing country. So we decided to pick two locations. One in a developed country, and one in a so-called developing country. Now we decided to first examine Spain, um, as it's a country that we're all relatively, uh, um, we all relatively, we know, we all relatively know a lot about. So as you know, Spain has been very, very badly affected by the recent economic crisis, and uh, unemployment is at around 25 percent. Now this is the second highest in Europe behind Greece, um, and if you take into account that unemployment across the uh, EU countries lies at about 10, 10.5%. This is a huge, huge figure. What's more worrying, however, is the unemployment rate among young people. Um, at the moment in Spain, in 2014, unemployment among, youth, among young people aged between 15 and 24 peaked at 57.7%. Now, also, the EU average for this um, segment of the population is at around 22%. So you can see that Spain is suffering very badly. Now, many experts feel that, uh, that uh, this will have uh, long-term consequences on this sector of the population. Indeed, Oxfam reported this year that they expect by the end of the decade that 40% of the Spanish population will be ex socially excluded by then. So this is a massive problem for, um, for the country. We then decided to look into a developing country, and we were lucky that we had Ines, who, uh, as you know, has, uh, has some experience living in the Dominican Republic. Now, statistics for the Dominican Republic weren't so easy to come by, but we did find one that we found very interesting, in that only 1.9% of the uh, Dominican Republic's GDP is invested in education. Now, this is surprising because it's the lowest level across the Latin American and Caribbean region. And we feel that this low investment in education does have consequences um, on, the young, on the youth and uh, their employment chances in the Dominican Republic. For example, um, schools tend to be, um, some schools tend to be overcrowded, teachers tend not to be very motivated, um, absenteeism is high and many students, and many students um, drop out. Especially in the city areas, there's a problem with students dropping out, becoming involved in crime. Um, and indeed, um, in terms of people reporting uh, gang violence, 
the Dominican Republic uh, ranked as number one in the Latin American and Caribbean region. Also, as a, lack, as a result of the lack of investment in education, um, students tend to leave school without the necessary life skills, which then obviously has an effect on uh, their employment chances. Also in the Dominican Republic, um, youth unemployment is very high, lying at the moment is around 30%. We wanted to verify whether these problems were actually of great importance to people living both in Madrid and in Santo Domingo. We, it was very essential for us that to go beyond data and to have real testimonials of what was happening in both cities. In Madrid, it was actually a little bit difficult and we encountered some barriers because of time cons constraints. But in the Dominican Republic, um, it was much easier because of having direct contacts and connections. So um, after using an embassy map and talking to different profiles in the neighborhood of Villamella in Santo Domingo, we came out with some very um, useful information and insights. Yosanele Paula, she's uh, an example of our interview. Um, she mentioned uh, the problems that young people face uh, when graduating after high school and trying to find a job. She also said that gun crime was considered to be a problem in the neighborhood of the Yamaya as well, and she sees it every day. And unfortunately, drug dealing is um, contemplated as an option in the neighborhood of the Yamaya. Um, to be fair in gender, we have another guy, this is Francisco Polanco. He, as a hobby, he dances with his group of friends and he dances for salsa singers and urban dancers as well. And he said that before any performance, he chooses his outfit. So he said that it would be very cool to actually wear his own clothes when performing. So for, from these two examples as well as from other interviews that we conducted, we could see what the problems that those people face in the neighborhood of Villamella, but also we could see their interest in fashion and how they link their hobbies to the fashion industry. So what, what happened with that? This helped us make our decision, shape our project, and this is how the idea of Guardando Futuros, which is um, sewing community's future, came to be. So what, what is this all about? First of all, this is a concept that wants to include a socially excluded people in the neighborhood of Villa Bella Brasso in Madrid that we will explain later. And we offer them the opportunity to learn courses both on how to create a business, more business focused, and also on fashion, how to do their own creations. So in this case, after considering many forms, legal entities, we decided that this should take the form of an NGO, basically because we would have more access to different funds and subsidies. It was the easiest thing. This space of the workshop is going to be shared with the shop. Um, here, what it's going to be is that the students will be able to sell their own creations as well as their clothes and trendy uh, accessories. And also, they're going to improve, since they're excluded, you know, they're going to improve their communication skills uh, working with the clients. But not only this. Uh, we will also give the opportunity to designers, to attract designers that will be working with us, to sell their fashion lines. So this will be the best place to display their work. In this case, we decided that we should be a limited company because uh, the project meets uh, the requirements, and as we are four owners, um, we need to cope with the initial cap uh, investment, which is of 3,000 euros, and we, since we're very involved, we want to go for that. So we think that for the project success, a good location is essential. So we began a research in Madrid, and after analyzing different areas, we came to the decision of placing it in Lava Pierce. And why Lava Pierce? Because it's one of the most multicultural areas in Madrid with a national and international influence. Also, since the 90s, when the town, of, the town hall of Madrid uh, began with some programs, social and educational programs, it has become 
the neighborhood with the highest number of neighborhood and uh, cultural associations. And nowadays it's starting to be a place for fashionable and modern people that could be our potential clients and students. So we went to, to Lava Pies and we were visiting some estate agencies and finally we found a nice place in Calle Esperanza 5 that it has a place with 300 uh, square meters distributed into floors that it's make it perfect for our concept of the workshop and the shop. So after designing this place in Madrid, we moved to Dominican Republic and again with Ines' help, we decided to place it in the in San Bill Mall because it is on the Dominican culture to frequent malls. Also, it has an easy access with a metro stop and it's a main issue because most of the students saw transportation like a, a, a barrier, a main barrier. And the security needs that we need in, in, the, in the workshop and the shop are provided by the security wards of the mall. So again, it makes a nice place for our workshop and shop, for, even for, also for clients and for students. So until now, uh, to guarantee uh, a complete achievement of our goal, we also needed to uh, uh, meet our client needs. So we wanted to create fashionable and trendy clothes that our students felt motivated to create, but at the same time, uh, our clients wanted to purchase. It was very important to uh, satisfy our customers' needs because they will uh, assure the continuity of our, of our um, enterprise in future years as uh, they this will be our main stream of revenues. So we decided to start searching for possible designers that could create this trendy clothes that we were looking for. <coughs> After our research we managed to contact three incredible designers that uh, shared a common characteristic. They were all young people. And uh, this gave, gave us an extra value as um, uh, they shared uh, this uh, characteristic with our target group what meant that uh, the level of engagement that uh, they could have with our enterprise could be much more powerful. Uh, as we've been saying along the presentation, we are focusing in two areas, and as we think that fashion trends are also different in both areas, we located uh, uh, designers in both countries. In Santo Domingo, we contacted with Miguel Angel Pereira, that he's very interested in fashion industry, and with his creativity, he managed to create t-shirts for the uh, Youth World Day 2011 in Madrid, and also some proposals for Brazil 2013. He also has a strong connection with the cinema industry, which gave, gave it even more value. In Spain, we managed to contact Gabi Hernández Allende, who creates her garments with textile leftovers, and the environment plays a very important role in the way she understands fashion. And also, Lucia Tavio Velda, who is specialized in textile printing, and her garments are 100% handmade. Materials was also a very important issue that we wanted to deal with. As we all know, the fashion industry generates lots of controversy because of the waste that it creates in the environment. So we wanted to deal with, in some way with this waste. So selecting the appropriate materials was, was very important. The first materials that we decided that we would use in our enterprise were retales, textile leftovers. There's loads of small companies around the city that uh, sell textiles, and they always, always have small leftovers that they usually sell at a very low price. So there was the attractiveness of these companies, that we could uh, deal with the waste that they had, and also at an achievable price. The second uh, uh, materials that we wanted to use were old clothes and, um, and used garments. We thought that we were capable of transforming uh, these clothes into new ones. Therefore, we contacted with companies like Umana, that are, it's a, it's a company that sells secondhand clothes at an achievable price too. And also we wanted to deal with the waste that big companies create. So we tried to contact with companies like H&M, that's very proactive in recycling, and also um, Inditex. And uh, try to deal as well with the waste that they create to, to produce new garments. Uh, and finally, we wanted to go a step further and introduce an innovative and sustainable technique to our enterprise. After studying several types of techniques, we decided that we would use banana fibers. Why banana fibers? Because both the Dominican Republic and Spain are producers of bananas, and we thought that we could, we could deal with the waste created by them. <laughs> So until now, we've uh, to told you the theory, we know the type 
uh, materials that we want to use, and we also know the type of design. But could we transform this into a tangible product? Here you can see three images. The first one is a textile leftover. The second one are old t-shirts, and, and the third is an old scarf. So where some people see waste and old clothes, other people see? <laughs> <laughs> strategy as part of our business plan, but this is also very important for us to be able to ensure that we are having the, intent, the impact that we intended. Now we've put together a strategy for the first year, for the first three years, and for the first five years. So in the first year, uh, we aim to run one course um, and hire three part-time teachers, two focusing on design and one focusing on business studies. Um, we, we aim to enroll 12 students. Now, um, we aim to, we, our aim is that eight of the students will be subsidised by our company. However, as part of our financial model, we um, also believe that um, there's space within our enterprise for students who are willing to pay a fee because there's uh, added value there for everyone. Um, what's very important, though, is that the number of students who are paying a fee does not exceed the number of subsidised students because we obviously want to make sure that we are having an impact. <coughs> Within the first year, we aim to have a full course subscription. This will be checked, obviously, on a daily basis with attendance records and dropout rates. Um, our aims are to improve overall student well-being, which we will assess on an individual basis between talks with students, and also to improve students' long-term employment prospects with the qualification that they, that they achieve at the end of the course. This will be a way of measuring that. Looking into three years, um, as we said, within three years we'd like to have launched our um, projects in Santo Domingo. This will be based on the experiences that we managed to collect in Madrid. And we'd also like to expand our Madrid base to increase the number of students, increase, increase the number of courses offered and the number of teachers, and the variety of teachers who attend. Within five years, um, we hope that both businesses are making a profit. And we'd also like to um, establish partnerships with um, members of the fashion industry in order, to, um, in order to provide us with materials and to help us with our other goal of uh, investigating, researching into new, <coughs> new ways of uh, achieving sustainable materials. Within this time, we hope to reduce youth unemployment and reduce crime in the areas that we're working with. Um, we, would you, we would check month, on a monthly basis local stats of the, local, of, the re, of the regions that we're working with and we'd also like to increase uh, the families of students overall income this would be checked with this would be checked on an individual one-to-one -one basis and last but not least it's our beautiful manifesto that we want people to read it and engage with us because we think that engagement that engagement in this kind of social project is indispensable and this is the result of our four different personalities and backgrounds looking for a common goal that is create and give possibilities to the people that need uh, wants a change in their lives. As you can see on the bottom, we have like the four words that is love, learn, work and enjoy. That because this defines the attitude that we want in the people that we join our, our project. So this is our beautiful way of saying what is important for us and why. And before saying goodbye, I would like to say thank you all of you and thank you to my group because I'm really proud of being part of this group. And we want to say goodbye with this beautiful quote that say some people want it to happen, some wish it will happen, and we make it happen. <laughs> Thanks for this 
amazing presentation. I have a couple of questions. Did you ever talk about shopping online? I see a shop, a physical shop. I see people moving from Spain to to Santo Domingo, which is nice place. But are you thinking about using this global thing through e-commerce, for example, to selling these products? Because it will be a pity, such of a great idea. It's, it's just based in Lava Pies and in a mall in Santo Domingo. And the second thing is, uh, I guess all your clients, uh, all the people who are going to be in, in these courses, hmm, is something that will be physical. But are you thinking about to sell this type of courses or this type of experience on, on online courses? Because it will be a pity that it's just for few people in a present, uh, in a present. So are you more? I think that right now we are, we've just studied like the of the project. We've just gone into uh, some areas that we wanted to cover. As uh, David said before, we want to act everywhere, develop and so-called developing countries. Uh, but, and we selected Santo Domingo and Spain as an example where we would start it. But we want to replicate uh, all over the world. And the part of, uh, of uh, um, e-commerce uh, yes, probably it would be an option. We we haven't like talked into the uh, depth, depth uh, into de to it, but yes, it's it's probably an option. But as 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 I'm saying, we've just uh, like analyzed the feasibility, so like the the essential parts to make this happen. There are other things that probably maybe uh, our strategy could change and we could add new things to it that we will come after. This. But right now. but maybe it's not as, as visible on the ground. So this is kind of the approach that we would take. Um, yeah, apart from congratulating you on your fantastic catwalk styles, <laughs> um, I, r I also want to congratulate you for the primary research, okay? The, the, the interviews and showing that and the, the, the efforts that you've gone, I think, are really to be congratulated. I have a, qu a question that kind of complements what uh, Jimmy asked, and that's about um, raising, scaling up, and the using, uh, and it's an area you didn't, I don't think, brought out a lot, the, the links between Spain and, and the Dominican Republic, and, and how you can draw on the learning, the cross-learning possibility of exchanges between the two yes. projects and countries, which I think is really exciting. That's our final project, but here, our idea was mainly, I think, to sell the concept to make sure how we understand what is it. But there are lots of details behind it that in 20 minutes we are not uh, capable of explaining. But we've analyzed the yes. different of communication, social, social media, which creates the Facebook web page, the states programs, things like that. So it's online as well, it's available to the public, so everyone can actually have an access. But, but if you put people uh, creating these wonderful designs, you already show us. One of the main things that, especially for people who might not have been future, you know, like the young people who show us that now we, the younger, uh, we have a very black future. I think it's very important that if, if I go to your project, to your project, to your courses, and I get involved in you, your main goal is also selling my products somehow because that will mean that will make me stay longer. If I stay with you in your project one year and I didn't sell even one nice t-shirt that you have, maybe I will get tired. So that's why I was 
hypothesize about this online thing, because put an online shop, it's peanuts comparing what you are presenting here. It will be a big thing that you don't use this online, especially because if you want to be a social enterprise. So it's, it, it's uh, for me, it's a part that you should, in the near future, not in a second step, to really, because the effort you are putting in the beginning, just a little more effort to really make a big thing and helps you to grow, to grow your own project, which is very nice. This is something uh, that maybe you might know, just ask you, do you know uh, what cir circular economy is? entrepreneurship to people that need a job, not just any job, a cool fashion job. So that element is really striking. And also not segregating, but uniting really cool designers who have a name and a brand with these young people who have no brand and no reputation at all. And putting them together, not separating them, is another element that really makes it very different from many other projects, and I'm sure it's been, it would be a very successful one. And last but not least, the amazing unity of this team. You can see them there, how unified, usually after two months working together. Or <laughs> these guys really work really well together. So as a team, I can see this being a successful team also in the future. Congratulations. Thank you.